Daily Podcast. Hey, I would like to greet you in a pleasant way. Mike's Daily Podcast. Thank you for listening to Mike's Daily Podcast. My name is Mike Matthews. If you didn't know that, this may become news to you. And you are going, hey, what is this show? Is it really daily, every day? Or did I not know that? That sort of was a song. Yes, my name is Mike's Daily Podcast. My name is Mike Matthews, and yes, this show comes to you from Cafe Anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Mike's Ton today. Daily. And it's good to be here. Podcast. Because I have been yeah. full of thoughts lately. I have to spill them out. Thoughts out of my head. Uh, well, let's see. Let's start with the first one. I finished that whole Netflix show called Surviving Death and it ended with something about reincarnation I had no idea I never knew the white Caucasian somewhat Catholic somewhat Protestant raised person I didn't know what reincarnation was until I watched In Search Of with Leonard Nimoy Spock I had never heard of reincarnation. I went to a Baptist school and they did not teach that. It is not part of the Christian doctrine because the, the, to boil it down for you as quickly as I can from what I know, from my limited knowledge, it's that God creates a unique soul every time. So when a person is born, that is a unique soul. And not reincarnated, not recycled. God's not into recycling. So that's the that's the premise. Why I probably was not ever taught at a Baptist school about that. But was very interesting this thing on Netflix. Now And here's today's podcast picture. I know we live in a world with fake news, fake this, fake that. Who am I to trust? Who am I to believe? But it had four stories. It was interesting. It it focused primarily on children. The reason there being that children, when they are born, and they are, they're very honest. They don't really know Google yet. They don't know how to research and find somebody and, 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 and say that that person is what they were in a previous life. Oh, I was Lincoln in a previous... I was... John Glenn, the astronaut, you know, they pick, always pick somebody famous. That's right, Basil. Oh, I just remembered something. Basil, oh, the late, great Basil the Boxer. We love him. So, um, somebody who's going through now what I went through last year is none other than Matchbox 20, Matchbox 20 singer, Rob Thomas. He and his wife, Mariposa, they have a Pomeranian Named Sammy who is Got all kinds of bad things happening Kidney issues and all that So he's He's going through that right now And trying to give his dog The most comfortable life possible In the last few weeks Of his life Which is exactly what I did I tried my best to make And Basil was very comfortable at the end You know That's all you can do And and he Rob Thomas has that street Life, Street Life, Street. It's based on his song Street Life Serenade. No, wait, that's. Am I thinking of Billy Joel? Street Life Serenade. That's not an easy song to sing, sorry. Oh, what is it? Rob Thomas. Street, Street Life Symphony was the, the song. And then uh, The foundation He started to help out um, The Well it's not coming up on my internet How awful is this This should be like the top 10 things Sidewalk angels there we go 
Sidewalk It was Sidewalk Symphony John Mayer played on the song Sidewalk Angels Foundation And it helps out all these No-kill animal shelters Around the country Do you know And in some ways This makes me very happy to hear That there are more dogs being adopted At this time Than in a long time And in fact This is not good But in Podcastro Valley Dogs are getting stolen there's such the, the the shelters apparently are are pretty empty. Although I won't say that exactly because they always can use help. And for years the animal shelters have been so overworked, and the dog pounds and whatever else you want to call them, and the the people that work there. And it's I I could never work at one of those, but they need they always need your help, and dogs always need to be adopted. And it's interesting, I have advocated for years, you know. That everyone should get a pet And adopt a dog And when I had Basil And I was walking him every day On my podcast every day I was espousing how wonderful it is To have a dog To to live You know, go out Get outside You meet new people Heck, I met, I met, my, I met my lovely lady friend Through Basil the Boxer So dogs are good But it takes a lot Now Rob Thomas will tell you It takes a little extra work It took a lot of extra work With Basil towards the end So And I had to spend the last two And a half years with that So I am pretty worn out And it's going to be a while Till I get another dog But it's interesting Because at this time There are so many dogs That have been adopted out And that makes me happy But I know About the time that I'm going to want to start Adopting dogs Adopting a dog Will be about the time Hopefully that the pandemic Starts to wrap up And this is the main reason Why people are adopting dogs Is because they're at home And they want a buddy But I'm I'm afraid That a lot of people Once they start going back to work Are going to be neglecting these dogs So There might be a lot of dogs Returning to the animal shelters We'll, we'll see But I will probably be at that time ready to adopt a dog But before that I got to I got some things I need to do And I definitely need some time To reflect It it, it is tough Losing Basil the Boxer I mean you heard me talk about him all these years This show's been going It's going on 10 years And What is the episode today? Did I even say that? 2187 2187 So you know, it's it's going to take a while Anyway, Cafe Anyway The podcast picture today I think we'll do a fairly recent one But Yeah Sidewalk Angels Foundation As we go outside of Cafe Anyway We're bringing you Mike's Daily Podcast Somewhere in Podcaster Valley 10 I need a podcast picture Right now Somebody bring me a podcast picture Ladies and gentlemen I am not finding a single podcast picture Well I'll come up with something And you'll see it at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com Joe Biden Is going to be inaugurated this Wednesday And Hugh Hewitt Who is often a critic Of Democrats And anything happening On the left He had this to say He said, President-elect Joe Biden has a historic opportunity to meet the moment with his inaugural address. All Americans should be praying he delivers the speech of his life. And it will need to be, given given the deeply divided nation he will be facing. You know, it's interesting that he says that, Hugh Hewitt, because four years ago, Trump gave a speech that was dark And depressing and sad And just talked about everything Going wrong All of it saying To say that he was going to fix it I guess basically But it was was a sad speech So hopefully Joe doesn't do the same thing Hugh continues He, Joe, will need to have an eye On the disaster of last week Or that was actually Yeah it was Well as of this Moment it is last week No it wasn't last week It was the week before January 6th 
the lost lives and the deep disgrace brought upon the nation. But He will also need to summon Americans to return to the politics of the post-war years when bipartisan debate turned on how best to defend the country so that all could enjoy its blessings. Yes, moderation is not easy to argue for after the savage attack On the Capitol by the mob This is a Republican This is a right wing conservative talk show host By the way That is saying this But moderation It is moderation that we need now Partisan dangers And sweeping sweeping condemnation Will not help the new president Achieve what is needed Appeals to reason and civility Could help him In Lincoln's words Bind up the nation's wounds And healing is what the nation needs Well put Hugh Well put I think that if If we could somehow do this What he is saying Moderation I was talking to somebody today And it's the first You know what I have had Little Full length conversations With people more on the right as of late And I had a very eye Ear opening And eye opening Conversation About how At the Capitol Although I, I will first say I completely disagree With this person Who was telling me this uh, In the fact that He was saying Oh it was just a, It wasn't sedition It was just You know A bunch of people That What did he say Bum rushed The Capitol That's all it was And that, that, was, that was his premise Which I completely disagree with It was a lot more than that Anytime anybody breaks into the Capitol That is horrible for us as Americans and as a nation But what's interesting is And he brought this up was How did they get in so fast? I mean what if that was a foreign power That was trying to break into the Capitol? What does that say about I mean this is We're lucky We got lucky with this you know, in a horrible, twisted way, we got lucky that that wasn't some foreign power that just busted into the Capitol. And he mentioned what was that movie, Angels Falling or Angels Something, the one where they take over the Capitol. Like Hollywood makes it all, you know, has to be all high tech with with drones and all kinds of stuff. But here, people just walked right in. And he said to me too And you notice that the, the mob A lot of them Were, ju- were walking inside uh, they, they still followed the velvet ropes They didn't walk outside of the velvet ropes They stay- you know, He was kind of making all these excuses For the, the bad behavior His point being It could have been a lot worse But At any rate It was Oh, and he said all these people saying sedition, sedition. They've never even used the word before. They probably never, probably maybe they used the word once doing a, uh, uh, playing a Scrabble game. But they did, they, you know, they see sedated in the dictionary and then they go down a little bit, a couple pages and they get to sedition. And then they, oh, what's this word? Never heard of this word before. So he was making light of that, but I still... You can go back and listen to my podcast The day that it happened I was just beside myself But you know Hugh Hewitt has something right there for sure Fitbit is now part of Google And I used to have a Fitbit And I hate Fitbit In fact This is why When Fitbit first came out uh, I was married at the time My then wife bought me a Fitbit With my money But she bought me a Fitbit And I used it And I was Oh this is great It can tell you how far you walk This is awesome Which now you can do On your uh, phone Your phone can actually turn into a Fitbit If you download the Google Fit app Which is now and, And that's been around for a couple of years Now Google actually owns Fitbit Fitbit When I lost my Fitbit I had my Fitbit for about A week And it just fell off my They used to tell you to clip it onto the side of your belt And it fell off So I wrote Fitbit and I said Hey, can I interview one of you guys on my podcast? And then uh, And and if you do that uh, Can you just uh, 
you can go ahead and give me a new one. And they said, oh, we don't want to be on your podcast, but we'll give you a new one anyway. So they go, went ahead and sent me a replacement. That was nice of them. But then all that technology inside that Fitbit that I had was completely obsolete. Within, I'd say, six years, it was completely obsolete. I couldn't use it anymore. They wanted me to buy a whole new one for over $100. So I got a letter from Fitbit that said, when, and this is by James Park, the CEO, president and co-founder. He said, when Eric and I, whoever Eric is, when Eric and I founded Fitbit 13 years ago, we did so with a simple but bold idea to make everyone in the world healthier. That's a great idea. Since shipping the original Fitbit tracker in 2009 to now having sold more than 120 million devices in over 100 countries, this mission has never wavered. Instead, millions of you joined that mission and made Fitbit a movement that transformed lives. In some cases, we heard from our users that we even helped save lives. Together, we've taken 275 trillion steps and logged over 15 billion hours of sleep. Oh, that's right. It also tells when you sleep. This is just the beginning. And I don't know how well that worked. The one I had anyway. But, you know, now you've had the Apple Watch and all that. Uh, so I'll just zip down uh, to the... Well, that's basically the gist of that. So... Uh, the trust of our users will continue to be paramount. Oh, yeah. Here, this is the big sentence. Google will continue to protect Fitbit users' privacy and has made a series of binding commitments with global regulators confirming that Fitbit users' health and wellness data won't be used for Google ads and this data will be kept separate from other Google ad data. Google also affirmed it will continue to allow Fitbit users to, co to choose to connect to third-party services. That means you'll still be able to connect your favorite health and wellness apps to your Fitbit account. These and other commitments by Google reinforce why Google is an ideal partner for Fitbit, who will continue to put our users first and help further our mission to make everyone in the world healthier. And, oh, we're in the money. We're in the money. That's James Park So yeah he basically wrote that to tell everybody Hey we just sold all your information to Google Woohoo Well that's pretty much all I have today on the podcast Oh just that I hope you're healthy and You know maybe someday you'll be a grandparent Did you know there are over 70 million grandparents in the U.S.? And the average age of a first-time grandparent is 50. Well, I am over 50 and I do not have grandkids. So, wham. 75% of grandparents are active online. 65% are on Facebook. That's why Facebook should be called Old Book. And 72 or Grand Face. Old Facebook. Old Grand Face. I can't come up with anything at the moment. Why are you putting this pressure on me? 72% think being a grandparent is the single most important role in their life. 10% of grandparents have ta have tattoos. I, I don't get that. I am not like whenever somebody says, oh, I'm a grandparent. I'm just like, well, whoop de doy I am happy for you, but whatever. I don't get it. So, but you know what? If I think you should applaud... Whatever achievements you make in your life And here's a little good lesson for you A motivating statement used too much for too long With too many people becomes false And everyone knows it This I took from Good success learning good lessons from bad leaders By E. Arthur Self, PhD Here's one other thing Affirming statements can become false narratives, sounding good when first communicated, but with time becoming just the opposite. Demotivating and devoid of impact. Yeah. That could be. I think basically what, is, what he's saying is shake it up from time to time. Just like Taylor Swift said. Or shake it. No, she said shake it off. 
Shake It Up would be the Cars. And Rick Ocasek saying that. Okay. I can get behind that. Look who's outside a cafe anyway, somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Ten. Hello, Michael Mass, it's Madame Blue Tomato Hunt. Yes, I don't have a Fitbit. Oh. Oh, that's too bad. Do you use Google Fit? Yes. Do you use the Apple Watch Fit thing? Yes. Do you use the fitness book by Jack LaLanne? No. I don't know what I was just saying in that last part, Jack LaLanne. Is it Jack LaLanne? Yeah, he was that bodybuilder guy. He got, he was, he had, he was healthy. He lasted a long time. Look who else is here. Hello, Dave Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And it's Bison Bentley. Do it! Mike, it's good to see that you are here today and that you're doing well day and you're not consumed with all kinds of crazy stuff day. Yeah, don't get consumed by crazy stuff. Do it! Bison Bentley, my question to you is because you have bison in your name. Are you affiliated with that crazy, wacky guy with the bison horns and the bison head that broke into the Capitol? And that he was spreading the coronavirus around? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Do it! Mm-hmm. All right. I'm glad we all have masks on. And it doesn't sound like we have masks on. Because when you put on a mask, it definitely makes you sound like you have a mask on. But we don't. Next show, it's going to be the wonderful Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere the Engineer. And go to mikesdailypodcast.com right now because there's a link to the radio station that I will be on tomorrow morning, Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. playing music that, okay, some of you hoity-toity people might be like, eh, you're not playing the new song from the Peaches. But for others, you might be going, whoa, that's cool. I remember that one. That's fun. I'll dance. I'll do a little dancing on a Sunday and listen to Mike. And those are the people that I hope will listen. And a link is at mikesdailypodcast.com. And if you would like to chime in about any of the topics we covered today, you can call me 336-MM-DAILY. 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM as in Mike Matthews. Daily as in what this podcast We'll try to continue to be doing as much as it can. Take it away, A-Frame. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.